Welcome back to the channel guys. In today's video, we are doing a crankshaft up build. So we're starting from the crankshaft and working our way up. Now this bike's actually been getting rebuilt from a build I did on it actually a fair while ago. Now the reason for the rebuild is uh, the customer wants to do a few track days on the bike and give it a hard time. So we need a good solid crankshaft in there to start from a good foundation. On top of that, he wants to move the torque curve lower into the RPM range. So we're gonna be doing a cam swap as well. And uh, finally guys, I'm gonna bring you guys with me out on the test ride just to show you how quick these things get moving. So let's dive straight into it and make it happen. Now I've already got the engine torn down to save you guys some time. So let's take a look at this crankshaft. So this is just a factory crank and rod assembly. However, it's been trued up to under 2,000 of run out. A uh, bigger big end bearing is used on the rods. And uh, in place of the factory crank pin to hold it all together, we use a, uh, a plug on there, it's a little bit stronger. And then finally guys, it's just welded up into place to keep it true so it doesn't move. Okay, now that we've got the crankshaft covered, let's get it into the uh, engine cases. Put them together. Torque them up. And get it back into the body. Okay, what I'm doing now is measuring the exact size of the pistons with a micrometer. Once I've got that measurement, I can set the bore gauge to that size. And once that's done, I can use the bore gauge to determine how much piston to bore clearance there is and if the cylinders are out of round at all. I take measurements at three different heights in the cylinder and at 90 degrees of each other to get the most accurate indication I can. And in this case, guys, the piston to bore clearance is three thou, which is absolutely fine for this application. Right, ring end gaps. Setting the ring end gaps correctly is crucial to getting the most performance out of the engine. There are a few rules of thumb to go by when setting the ring end gaps, such as the typical four thou per inch of bore. And that's applicable for most everyday naturally aspirated engines. You go up to about four and a half thou per inch on uh, race engines, high, like high compression race engines, uh, six thou uh, or more for um, you know, turbochargers or supercharged applications, and six and a half thou, seven thou, or even higher for uh, nitrous applications. This engine being slightly higher in compression ratio, sitting at approximately 11 to 1, and knowing the customer intends to do a few track days with the bike here and there, I will be setting the ring end gaps a little outside the rule of thumb guidelines. Keeping in mind Harley engines are air cooled, which generally heat soak a little bit hotter than most liquid cooled engines, so that should be considered when setting ring end gaps. Lastly, the piston ring orientation on the piston is crucial. Rings do move around the piston during operation, so setting them up in a manner that greatly reduces the risk of having them rings line up is paramount. Not only does it help keep the combustion up where it's supposed to be, it does reduce blow by and ultimately reduces oil recirculation back through the intake manifold if you still run the standard breather system and you don't have a vented dipstick or trans cover. Alright guys, time for the camshaft. Now this time around we're going to be using the Cyclerama slash APE CR483. Now this camshaft has been designed in conjunction with Cyclerama and APE here in Australia and it provides a brilliant, broad, smooth torque curve, good power range, heaps of power, it's very easy to tune and it's very smooth to ride on the street so it's a perfect cam for this combination.
on the dyno and ready to uh, ready to go. Just to have a quick look, last time this thing was built, it was just 128 cubic inch uh, APE kit with the 475 cam, stock throttle body, bigger injectors. Just had the Screaming Eagle four and a half inch street cannons with the factory headers. And back then we were able to make 128 horsepower and 140 foot-pounds of torque. This uh, slight little dip here, I've seen this uh, a lot from the 475 camshaft. Yes, I know that some pipes can cause this little dip as well, but I do see that a lot from the 475. Yeah, so I'm eager to get this thing ramped up and tuned up, so let's get into it. with where we're at uh, with the tune now still just a little bit of blending to do just uh, trimming up the the cruise uh, AFRs and that just so this thing's running really nice but uh, pretty happy with how it's come up I did gain the torque that I knew I would in the area I would coming from the 475 to the 483 uh, so we'll take a look at the the graphs and have a look so the blue is what we had before remember 128 and 140 pounds of torque but now uh, oh, actually I need to make that darker so you guys can see enlarge that okay so the black one is what we're at what we're at now so you can see our torque has increased from the get-go and right in the middle where this little dip was in the torque curve and in the power from the 475 at 43 has lifted that through the mid-range there at like what's that three grand three to four grand four and a half even it's really lifted that right through the middle there so that's going to be the biggest difference when you feel this bike you're not going to feel three horsepower less you're definitely going to feel seven more foot pound but the biggest area you're definitely going to feel it right through this middle i mean don't worry peak numbers i've talked about that in other videos that's just up here but right in the meat of the tune right here this is where this is going to really feel good out on the road and when you open the open the throttle so uh, i'm really happy with how it's come up i can't wait to uh I can't wait to get this thing out and uh, take it for a ride on the road. I know it's going to be a bigger improvement um, over what it was uh, when I first built it with the 475. So, yeah, I'm really excited to get this thing out on the road. Uh, so let's get into that.
I'm absolutely stoked. That thing is fast. You saw there, that was fourth gear, wound it on from 100 k's an hour into fifth and sixth. That thing just, it gets up and goes. And before anyone jumps in the comments and says, oh my God, he can't believe he rides customers bikes like that. Brad is a good friend of mine and he's absolutely fine with me riding the bike like that. So uh, obviously I don't ride everyone's bikes like that. So just calm down. He's a friend of mine and he's a-okay with it. So uh, yeah, he's absolutely stoked with how the bike's gonna go too because I've just shown him the footage. He's, he's excited as hell. So he can't wait to come pick this thing up and take it for a ride himself. So. I'm really looking forward to seeing his reaction, guys. Thanks very much for watching this video. I'm gonna see you again real soon.